I don't remember 2016. I don't remember 2020. And I ain't afraid of no ghosts. All right, that'll do. <laughs> that was be- way better than mine. All right. What, what were you going to say? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? Were you gonna... No, you have to do it now. <laughs> it's already gone. It's already gone. It's this pain. It's in the wind. Uh, yeah, I'm, chick- I'm, I'm checking it out. Uh, <laughs> all right, buddy. So this is like, we're kind of late on this one just because we both had crazy schedules lately. Uh, true. True. But I, now... was, I was gone for, uh, yeah, for a while. Um, by the way, before we get started, do you want to plug your book? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know how relevant it is, but yeah, I just uh, I just put out a book of hip hop monologues for theater. Um, by by all accounts that I can see, the first of its kind. Um, it's available on Audible. It's an ebook, and now it's a paperback. Um, I have paperback copies at my house. It's kind of surreal. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I wrote it in uh, 2015. Damn. So now it's like an out. It's a thing. It's been a six-year journey. It's a thing. Oh, and and it's a play. Um, the the play will be, uh, the play will be running at Santa Cruz Actors Theater in May, which will be the second time it's been put on as a play. Nice. You can catch me performing it. And it's called the Milkshake uh, Milkshake Monologues, right? Milk crate. Milk crate. Milk crate. Monologue. Sorry. Milkshake monologues sound like uh, like the sequel <laughs> to American Graffiti or some shit. Oh god. <laughs> 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 sorry the milk crate monologues i'll leave i mean I'll, i might watch it <laughs> i mean it'd be an experience um so the milk crate monologues we'll put a link in the description um just one i know it's very exciting so i want to give you a chance to just get that out there right at the beginning while everyone's still watching so no, I, I, absolutely it still doesn't feel real i've been working on getting it out for so long oh yeah i remember talking about it like we first like wrote it yeah years yeah. ago and just i was like that sounded amazing but uh, but yeah, it should I mean I'm getting a good response, so we'll we'll see where it goes. We'll see what happens. But I'm gonna keep pushing it. Absolutely, as well. You so should. back to my other back to my other favorite '80s thing, yes. other than hip hop culture. Yeah, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yep. Uh, so the like every, everyone's watched channel long enough knows that you are the Ghostbusters master at, at in our group. Like nobody knows. Or is it more obsessed with Ghostbusters than you in our group? Um, this is true. Which this is not is a bad that, that is not a bad thing. Let me be clear. But as far as it's kind of like me with Spider Man, like nobody knows this property better than you do. Yeah. Uh, well, for better or for worse, whether it's a bad thing or not, it is. It's who I am. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> I, just, I've, I've embraced this long ago. You and I reviewed the, two, the 2016 version. Neither of us really liked it. Uh, to put it mildly. No. Nope, uh, um. It just. So so. This film, I think, greatly illustrates why I didn't like it. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and the the biggest reason, I'll, and I'll let you go because you know you know what I'm gonna do. Um, <laughs> but but I I think the biggest thing that illustrates why I didn't like the 2016 Ghostbusters is because the story just wasn't finished. Mm-hmm. The original story wasn't finished. Now I I feel like the Ghostbusters story, the New York story. It's mm-hmm. whole, complete, and perfect. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like three. it took three films to do it. And now the franchise is kind of opened up in this great way where we can accept and appreciate Ghostbusters stories that, that come from different places. Mm-hmm. Had, had 2016 came after this, I might have entertained it better. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know, um, it, it, yeah, because this this is just... It's just the end of one of my favorite stories, and now I don't feel like it has to go any further in its current iteration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, I see it in the context of the film. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I love, I love it greatly. For I love it for everything it's not. I love it for everything it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, clearly this was not the script that Ghostbusters three was supposed to be. No. Uh, but that's kind of why I like it. Mm-hmm. Be because because it did it did kind of um it did kind of put this nice end cap on what we always wanted as Ghostbusters fans who grew up in the eighties and nineties, mm-hmm. which was we were kids who wanted to be Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it it grabbed a hold of me in that way, 
and it was, uh, like and it was, film it. And yeah. it was a beautiful thing. It, it delivered in, in many levels. But go go ahead. I'll let you do your thing. Yeah, I did really like this movie. Uh, I think I was definitely a bit uh, cynical kind of going into it a little bit because from the trailer, my big concern with it was that it was going to like my issue with the Kevin Feige, uh, uh, not Kevin Feige, uh, Paul Feig, Paul Feig, the Paul Feig version was it felt like it was putting a like a square peg in a round hole. Uh, it Absolutely. was a, a Paul a Paul Feig movie in Ghostbusters drag. Um, it wasn't. Re- it didn't really feel like a Ghostbusters film. Um, although it was like, although it was like, it was a comedy. It just wasn't Ghostbusters comedy. Um, my con- exactly. My concern with the newest one was I was going to co- go too far in the opposite direction, uh, where it was going to take itself too seriously. It's going to take uh, take the property to like too much reverence and too much like uh, almost religious worship. <laughs> uh, to, to an extent to appease the fans that didn't like 2016 version and like right. th- there's still some parts towards the third act where kind of leans a little into that it doesn't do that and i was happy to see that um for the most part it finds a good balance between definitely lean into the nostalgia of the property um and definitely definitely doing some fan service for the, the people who have been who've been following the franchise for obviously decades um, but it still has its own identity within that. It's still a comedy. It still has a lot of jokes. Are, the characters were fun. They're well written. The story is well crafted. Um, they made a character named Podcast likable. That was already impressive in my book because the minute that kid came out and named himself a podcast, I was like, "Oh no, that's a terrible choice." Well, well I, I will, I will amend your comment. I will say that Logan Kim, the kid who played Podcast, made a guy named Podcast likable. That is very true. That, yeah, that, he, that kid is just he so was much brilliant. He was, and I Bri- brilliant in his own capacity, but did not draw focus away from the scene or the film at all. Yep, and I think uh, like, and you have to work hard to po- come back from that deficit because right off the bat, like if you're neutral towards someone, you hear some podcast, it immediately drops like fifty points. So you actually get to the point where it's like, yeah, I like podcast. Already, you're off to a good start. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I I loved I I loved all the kids, man, and and like I said, um, the 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 kind of last. I don't even know if I want to call it a power fantasy, but but the last fantasy of every Ghostbusters kid was that we all wanted to do it. We it didn't it didn't matter how young we were and that there were nuclear accelerators. We wanted them on our backs. We wanted yeah. to go do it. <laughs> to watch it was cathartic. It really was. Yeah, I it really. Was, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I I thought the way they wrapped up e- Egon's story, I thought was really tastefully done. Yes, um, I thought yes. that was very well handled. Um, it's it's a little ghoulish they're selling a toy of it, but I'm kind of ignoring that bit. Well, well, uh, yeah, like I, the, I, I just um, the all all parties involved had to have known that that was going to happen. Yeah, um, it's still I, kind I'm of just, ghoulish. Yeah, yeah, I'm just glad that that they're doing it in more of a collector way. Like I don't see I don't see any commercials right now. Yeah, of of Phoebe. As a as like the little you know little six inch figure and then oh here's you know you know yeah I, I haven't seen that so I'm okay with it I haven't seen the ghost Egon Happy Meal uh, although I do know the ghost Egon action figure exists the, uh, no the action I I know it exists but I'm the, just saying in in the way that they are marketing it and putting it out mm. it's definitely more for us than it is for true it it, it is kind of in that weird kind of ethical gray area though uh right. it's kind yeah. of like, well well it's i mean you know harold ramus was a majority shareholder in, in the ghostbusters franchise you know yeah. his uh his daughter did approve this mm-hmm. um you know what i mean so true. so so morally and ethically i, I think we're okay Okay, fair enough. Um, I bet better than better than Harold Ramis dying in 2015 and then the bust of his head in 2016. Ghostbusters. Yeah. When yeah. when the story had nothing to do with him. Well, yeah, I guess everyone <laughs> you know? guest star that guest star in that movie. Um, yeah. Well, but, I mean, there's there's well this, I mean, this obliterates it in every way. It's yeah. Like, I agree. Um, it's not even worth getting angry over at this point. <laughs> that's true. Uh, I think if I had like one major complaint about this movie is I felt like the climate, the third act did feel a little too fan servicey for me at certain parts. It okay. did feel like it followed the just kind of just redoing the climax of the first Ghostbusters a little too much beat for beat. Um, like to the point where it was like, it, that's kind of where I felt like its own identity was kind of robbed from it a little bit in order to just contribute that fan service, if that makes sense. 
Well, I I like I like the twist. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. So so if you're if you're a Ghostbusters fan, then you know rule number one. Mm-hmm. Never go out alone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so that's yeah, you don't go ghost busting alone. You don't do it. That's rule mm-hmm. number one. Okay. Egon made that rule. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily in the films, but in the lore of what we're talking about, Egon makes that rule. So the fact that he goes off alone and does that. Mm-hmm. Is already immediately infinitely more interesting than something they could have thrown at us where they're all back together and they just go on another romp, you know? True. No, but like I, I don't I don't have an issue with that necessarily. I'm talking about like the like the very third act, uh, where this is again the spoiler territory. Well, well, yeah, I, I just mean that the the twist is the twist is that he simulated being with four Ghostbusters without actually having them. Mm, okay. He, he yeah. went out there and did it on his own. He he tied up. I mean, the movie's been out for almost. Yeah, I was gonna say like if you haven't seen it by now, I don't know what I'm telling so, you. So yeah, yeah, so you know he he goes into well well for like another thing you got to understand is that the evil Shandor stuff is not out of place. Um, evil Shandor built stuff all over the world. Um, he built stuff significantly around New York, and they're all conduits for the supernatural and en- and en- entity. So it was inevitable that Gozer was gonna come back. Yeah, and I, um, I don't really have a necessary problem with that part. I, like, I mean, God knows I have a Shandor poster behind me. Right, right. Um, but I think my issue is more like, it's not with like Gozer coming back. It's not with Shandor becoming another uh, relevant plot po- point again. Although I did find it was weird they cast J.K. Simmons and then killed him immediately. Uh, yeah, I I'm, I mean. So like, I'm wondering if you had a bigger role like in an earlier draft and then just got yeah, cut. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's a better, a big, a longer cut uh, out like, there somewhere. Because I'm like most sense to me is like you you don't cast J.K. Simmons just to have him have one line. Well, uh, especially because he's a method actor, so I so I'm thinking like they cut his flashbacks or they cut something. They cut something because it felt weird. That part felt weird. But uh, I I was actually excited because because that's the that's the second form that Evil Shandor has taken. He was in the Ghostbusters video game as well. Oh yeah, he was. Um yeah, yeah. and and so yeah, and and actually I'm gonna lean on the lore of the video game a bit here. Mm-hmm. To uh, to kind of explain what happens here with the with the third act. Uh, I think my issue is more just that it relies on the original Ghostbusters come back, which is cool to see. Um, but it, there, was, I think the one line that was kind of like kind of took me out of the moment was when they're doing the "Are you a god?" bit, uh, which is like, oh, I, I get why they did that, and it's it was funny, but at the same time, it kind of, it did it did remind me of when they gave Chewie the medal in the Rise of Sky, Rise of Skywalker. To the point where it's like, it did feel like it was like, are you happy, fans? You got the thing. Uh, so like that kind of yeah. distracted me a little bit. So uh. so so there there's so yes, that was a bit heavy handed. I agree with you. Mm. There's there's a number of ways they could have done it better that mm. all, all the fans would have recognized and appreciate. For example, you can ask the same thing, but yeah. Ray just be super calm. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm <laughs> yes, I'm a god. I feel like they just dragged that out too long to the point where it's kind it, of no, it, for it. real. Yeah, for for them to rehash that was was a bit heavy handed. I I feel like it would have been funnier if she's like, "Are you a god?" and he's like, "Yep." Yeah, yep. I, that would have been funnier. I would have, <laughs> I would have been so, <laughs> you know. even shorter. Um, yeah, I, but, I would have laughed at that harder. They they kind of milked that a little too much, and then they have like podcasts yeah. being covered in the in the marshmallow stuff, and you have like. Paul uh Paul Rudd, who I love no matter what he's in. Uh <laughs> okay, so so I, I gotta I gotta tell you, man, Paul Rudd is not my favorite. And yeah. and I mean it's a favorite, but I enjoy him. The the first time the first time I saw something I liked him in was Clueless. That was number mm-hmm. that was the first one. And then I didn't like anything he put out until he became Ant Man, bro. I gotta be Fair. honest with you. Fair. So and 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 this one, I I enjoyed his performance, but there were some times where he was teetering for me. I'm like too much really you think so bro you know um yeah the 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 um the terror dogs transformation oh yeah where where the where yeah where the key master and the gatekeeper (laughs) meet up again i thought that i thought that was trash i didn't think that was funny at all yeah fair um you know i i really didn't um the the interactions he had with carrie coon when they were like they're like i guess being flirtatious or whatever I thought that was lame. Yeah. Um, you know, could it, could it, both of them could have done better. Sure. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, no chemistry at all. Uh, yeah, there, you know, but, but it's not a deal breaker for me. Um, sure. he, he, he really shines when he's with the kids. Yes. 
Mm. When he's mm. with the kids, that that's when see that's when Paul Rudd and and the kids they kind of create this Goonies feel that I'm in love mm -hmm. with. Yeah, for sure, I can you see. You know, that. What I mean? like like Ghostbusters yeah, yeah. and Goonies like this, like I was loving that. Yeah, um, but like so like the a lot of a lot of the climb the very climax it did feel like it did just kind of repeat the same beats in the first movie, which is a little just to me to me personally was a little distracting. Uh, uh, agreed. Uh, um, I didn't I did not like. Um, I did not like the the woman who played Gozer. Was that Olivia? Was Olivia Wilde? I was it, but I don't know. Pretty sure it was, but I could be wrong. If it if it was her, then it was Olivia Wilde, and I'm kind of disappointed because I really like her. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, um, her her playing her playing Gozer like it it was almost as if she did not know what movie she was in. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it, like like gozer's not self-aware in that way mm -hmm. um gozer's just an entity who does the thing that it does you know mm -hmm. yeah um so so the fact that it's that she seems uh oddly self-aware like oh i'm the big baddie you know what i mean mm -hmm. like, yeah okay she, like had that air about it i i was like yeah, that piece didn't bother me as much, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, but but that that bugged me. Well, it's it's because the the woman who did it originally did such a good job. Mm -hmm. You know, she was she was just so neutral. I mean, she also had like five minutes of screen time. <laughs> to be well, fair. That, that's true. That's true. But but I don't know. She was she was a model. Um, the original. She carried herself better. Um, she she played the she played the scene neutral, whereas Olivia Wilde seemed like she had like some sort of. Uh, it, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. She was just, she was trying to pull too much focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that argument. Trying to pull too much focus. Like, like, um, yeah. If you're like a demigod or a deity or something from a different dimension, it's it's not like, oh, look at me, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I guess you could, I guess I can see the argument. I've always just kind of seen it as like a model wrapped in like bubble wrap. Uh, so I guess I just I I mean I mean way more complicated than that. But... I mean just like practically, like appearance wise. <laughs> yeah, appearance wise. Yeah, uh, but uh, like lore wise, I know it's much more complicated than that. Uh, well, well, but but out, but also I mean like Ghostbusters was worked on by like the best people in the business at the time. Oh yeah, it was lightning in a bottle. Like that, <laughs> that shit was not cheap. <laughs> I will say, look, like, it was funny because I actually uh, we actually met up uh, after you watched this the first time. We we're talking a bit about it. And Ghostbusters as a right. legacy, uh, and I was actually I did I was amused a bit more than a bit that what I was talking about with uh, Ghostbusters being like pretty much a direct like parody of Reagan Reaganomics at the time was directly mentioned in the movie. I appreciated well, that. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> because yeah, because you know what I mean. Like, but, like but that's, okay, they know. Like that that was kind of yeah, like, but, that, like, but that's the but that's the joke. It's it's yeah. like free enterprise. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like capitalism and free enterprise. These motherfuckers were walking around with nuclear accelerators, like yep. <laughs> untested, blowing yeah, shit up. And it's you know a great I mean? joke when you get when you understand the context. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that, that was that was the 80s. It was like, let's go into business. OK. But I think uh, <laughs> when they have when she has that conversation with Ray and he does mention it is like, well, we were getting into business, you know, it was, it was the Reagan years and stuff. Like that. I was like, okay, they know. They, know. Yeah, they <laughs> like, totally know. Yeah. Like that's, that's when I felt more comfortable. It's like, okay, they aren't going to just blow this up to like, Oh, like a religion level worship with Ghostbusters. They know what it is. No, uh, and, and that's, and that's what I mean. Like, like the, the circumstances surrounding them splitting up, um, you know what I mean? What was, it was a bit eccentric, but still very believable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like it, dissipated just as quickly as it started i bought it yeah yeah i i bought it too um i i do not the the one thing i don't buy is that egon couldn't convince them that something strange was happening yeah especially ray that one was i felt like if anyone was gonna go with it i thought it would have ray uh yeah you know well yeah because ray's the enthusiast yeah so, you, you know what i'm saying and and Winston was was working. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, Winston can kind of like, see, like going like, "Hey, I'm not moving out there for his job." But <laughs> yeah, yeah, like 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 Peter, I I get Peter being like, oh, "Okay, you're gonna have to convince me a little bit more." But but Ray would have totally gone with him. So I don't understand why he just took all the shit and left. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 why Ray didn't go after him. Yeah, um, you know, like I can see Japir's like 
Peter in the original movie is always just kind of there for the like for the money and the charm of it, really. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, and and so, and, but but also, but also, you know, Peter's hella clutch. Yeah, like in the times where it matters most, for like sure. he's invested. You but know? like he's a showman first and foremost. Yeah, yeah, uh, but but he but he definitely sees it as a job, and and there's a time to clock in and clock out. Yeah, but Egon and Ray were never like that. No, they weren't. That, that's, so. Yeah, so I I didn't get that part of his explanation. Um, if if anything, um, maybe Egon disappeared and Ray's been trying to find him. Maybe I, uh, I felt like that would have been better. Yeah, like something like that. But that being said, what we got was still well done. It was um, no, it was. It was. And uh, the, the the girl they got to play Egon's niece or uh, like grand uh, granddaughter. Granddaughter. Oh yeah, yeah. You're talking about McKenna Grace. Yes, was killed it. Fantastic. Like, killed it. The the '80s uh, heroine is alive and well. Yeah, and like McKenna, she, and McKenna Grace killed. Yeah. It. She did killed a fantastic it. job. I thought that was. I was very, very impressed. <laughs> and and that's and and all the conversations that we've had about things like that. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, like if, yeah. If it, if it wasn't clear before, that's what I'm talking about. A a young a young woman who who can put a, a film on her back and carry it ca- with character work only. Mm-hmm, she yeah. didn't need anything tacked on to be anything. She wasn't, she was just there in the story doing mm-hmm. her thing. And I, I believed it. I rooted for her. Yeah. I liked her. You know what I mean? I, I wanted it. And I'm impressed with the kid cast they got for this because like, yeah. again, like yeah. her and podcast alone are like, Jesus, where did you find these kids? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently, Logan Kim, the guy who played Pos- podcast, that's his first movie. I know. I looked it up. That's why I was even more impressed. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah, like I was like, hey, he, he got chops for days. Yeah, like, I, I mean, like the Stranger Kids that guy, I, I knew why he was there, but like everyone else. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we'll see. It's and and what's funny is I is I think um, he's the distraction. He kind of is, yeah. You you think, yeah, like he's he's the red herring, right? Yeah. Like you're following him around when you should be paying attention to everything else. I mean, I think the movie makes it pretty clear earlier on that it's about e- Egon's granddaughter. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that being said, the way uh, the way it came together, that that car chase sequence was amazing, oh, dude. Uh, like dude, unbelievably like, good. Yeah, like uh, I I was thinking to myself, like, how are you gonna top when they first catch Slimer? And it it just. It I, just destroys it in every way. It's so great. Like uh, what the, I guess the new variation, Muncher, I think is what they call him in this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And and Muncher and Muncher has has his own mystique and own cool and his little own thing gimmicks. about him. Yeah. I, I thought it was all all Ghostbuster ghosts have that. Yeah. I mean you it's, know, it's, they, it's an easy monster of the week formula. Yeah. Yeah, if you <laughs> if you watch if you watch the cartoon, like each distinct baddie that they face has some kind of thing like that. It's like, it's like Scooby Doo villains, you know. They're pretty easy. They're pretty easy to make something up for them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like, but but they're colorful. They're fun. They like they're entertaining to watch, and that's why you love them. You, you uh, know, they're you know some of what what I loved. Um, the one of the Easter eggs that I loved from the movie was that some of the ghosts that you see when the ghosts are leaving the uh, the mountain, mm-hmm. some of those are toys that were never in the series. <laughs> that's but, clever. Like, yeah, like, like the like the big boggle one with like the eyeball coming out of the forehead. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I saw that on Twitter. That was never there. in the cartoon or the movie. That was a toy. Yeah, yeah. That, I, like I, they they gave that toy some love because everybody had that toy. If you if you had <laughs> Ghostbusters and stuff, everybody had that toy. <laughs> I, so, I I miss if I know what you're talking about because I think some point that out on Twitter. Yeah, it's a big uh, purple one that that flies out of the window. Yeah, like and the, the eyeball is like. A oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. been a couple weeks since I've watched the movie, so but, I can't but, remember. But yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, they, but like like I I remember that's one of the first ghost toys from Ghostbusters that I got. Was, oh man, was that one. Um, so I I was loving that. Yeah, like so like when they actually, like they they do a good job kind of. Again, re- respecting the original one and not trying to hold it too high of revelry, which again was my main concern, while still creating its own identity that was a bit more optimistic and a bit more nostalgic uh, for the act of ghost busting, I think is be- the best way to phrase it, um, which was impressive because I think you know, I had this conversation about between Ghostbusters 1 and 2, where I don't really like the second one because it tried to kind of re identify itself in a way that didn't really work for me. Um, right, right. I, I dig, 
Well, I I dig the I dig the larger. See, I I look at I look at Ghostbusters one and two as things that go together. You know what I'm saying? If you mm-hmm. if you see them as isolated incidents, then I can understand that. Mm-hmm. But uh, but but yeah, like Ghostbusters one, two, and the video game, and now Afterlife, mm-hmm. they are, they kind of go together in in a way that that makes it all make more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know what I mean? Like. We we talked briefly about Evo Shandor in the first film, but in the second film we actually see the results of stuff he planned decades in advance. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and that gets explained because we have the video game. The the pink slime is because Evo Shandor has this freaking island in the middle of the Hudson River where he's mm-hmm. pumping shit into <laughs> New York mm-hmm. using the abandoned subway tunnels. That was key information we didn't have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so it, it was always a part of some kind of plan or some kind of contingency mm-hmm. that yeah. he had been fucking with since like the 1920s. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, and and afterlife adds on to that, right? Like oh, the, the, the mining operation. Through... Oh, sorry, God. But but yeah, the mining operation and Evil Shander basically owned that whole town. Yeah, but although the slime and, and everything in the Ghostbusters video game aren't really mentioned much in this film, there's nothing I nothing I caught. Um, there, there's there's things here and there, there but mm-hmm. but the the key the through line is Evo Shandor. He's yeah. an architect. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, all, all of the major spots in New York in our universe belong to him. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. hotels, the library where they saw the first ghost, the the subway, all that stuff was Shandor. Yeah. So, so in the so in the second one, they didn't do a good job of connecting it to Shandor, though. No, not really. Which, which is what they did in the video game, which was the third script that they never used. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they. So I see them all together. Um. And and I always have. I've always mm. tried to see them that way. Um, yeah, I can understand that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know. But 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 Ghostbusters two, I like for different reasons because, um, it leaned into what the cartoon tried to do maybe a little mm-hmm. too hard in the comedic aspect maybe but, but yeah. also in the lore aspect like i don't know if you've ever seen the real ghostbusters cartoons i watched the pilot but, I think but they're right. but they're deep as shit mm-hmm. they're, they're like deep they're there's like this is, and and they're all one-offs like you don't have to watch one episode to understand the other they're all encased in their own episode but 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 yeah like they're one of my favorite ones is mr sandman and okay. Mr. Sandman is this ghost that that wants to end all conflict in the universe by just making everybody sleep. Uh, sounds pretty good to right? me. Let's do that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so he's so he's a self-aware entity. He's walking around New York putting everybody to sleep, right? Mm-hmm. He puts the Ghostbusters to sleep. It's only Janine and Winston left. Okay. And he has this dialogue with Winston. He's like, why are you trying to fight me? I'm just trying to save everybody. And, and he's like... But the whole point of dreams is, you know, is mm-hmm. is we wake up and we try to make them come true. We try to live. We try to get yeah. better. You know, <laughs> and this is deep shit for kids to be watching. <laughs> okay. And, and then there's and then there's this existential thing where Janine dreams she's a Ghostbuster, so she wakes up as a Ghostbuster. And nice. Freaking seven. So so yeah. So I I think Ghostbusters two and subsequently Afterlife they lean more into that, mm-hmm. and that's why. And that's why the the themes of the movie start to get a little bit dark juxtaposition to the comedy, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, the the concept of Ghostbusters 2 was actually quite deep. It's like like your 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 passive aggressive, negative, um, forceful thoughts can actually turn into viscous material and start sure. to overrun your space. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a crazy concept. It is, but it, it's also kind of like goes in the, it starts mostly the third act goes that unrealistic territory kind of the way that wonder woman sequel did where it's oh, like yeah yeah i mean the, the statue of liberty the shit is crazy it's nuts. <laughs> yeah. the fact that everyone's like yeah a statue of liberty now oh my god it's a statue of liberty fuck yeah yeah then, then again then again i mean the first time 150 foot marshmallow went when i went out into in on broadway and was stepping on cars and shit so yeah, yeah. i mean if you if, if you live through that and five years later you see the Ghostbusters driving the Statue of Liberty, I mean, 
Except nobody believed the giant marshmallow man existed, which I still don't understand. Uh, Wait, what do you mean nobody believed it? Well, that was the whole thing in the second one, as they all thought well, it was a hoax. No, no, the the whole the whole thing in the second one was was that they got sued uh, into bankruptcy by the city. Well, it, yeah, because well, they, they they call them frauds and hoax, and that's become like the standard yeah, belief. That's the whole like. Well, that. yeah, but but that's for people who didn't experience it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's dude. not that's not that's not the same thing. Like the way I saw it was like, okay, the the marshmallow man <laughs> came out, you toasted it, you blew up an apartment building, and there's shit everywhere. So ghosts or not, somebody gotta pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, weren't they like saying like that I, I it's been a while since so I've watched two. Uh so correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't they but, trying to say like two- like ghosts, like there was like some hallucinogen to make but, everyone but, believe. But yeah, it. there were there were people who were there were people who were definitely deniers. But all the people who were involved in the first one did not, they did not make it a point to say, "Oh, you're fake" or anything like that. Like the mayor, the mayor didn't deny it mm, when they yeah. talked about it. You know that, yeah. like, like he they still got an audience with the mayor, mm, <laughs> and, and he fair. still was like, "Okay, so what's happening now?" You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, I'll give you that. So I'll he, give you that. Still, I'm still a little skeptical, but yeah, uh, he was still listening to him, and and uh, and and so yeah, there there were people around, but that that as with all things, you know, nobody, not everybody's gonna remember, and there are people who walk into a situation hearing crazy stories, mm-hmm. you know. But by the time we get to Ghostbusters Afterlife, it's it's like, oh, you don't believe in ghosts, even with all the evidence. Yeah, that was... that, that's like that's like a line, you know. Yeah, you know that was a line. So, so if you if you grew if you grew up away from New York in that time, then of course you wouldn't. You know, I like I think someone was trying to make a point where I was actually like, I don't know if I buy that about afterlife. They're saying like, how do you not know about the Ghostbusters when you're a kid? Like they fought a giant marshmallow man. It's like, yeah, but I also have kids today who don't know what nine eleven was. So let's be clear. Exactly. Yeah, but but that's yeah, that's that's my point. Like <laughs> yeah, everybody like that everybody one I'm thinks, willing to buy. <laughs> everybody thinks the time they live in is so epic, right? Yeah, so I was like that. That one, that one, I'm one like, yeah, I, I can believe kids of that generation wouldn't know what the hell the Ghostbusters was back in the '80s. Uh, well, well, yeah, you're talking. The the last movie came out in 1989, bro. Oh my god, <laughs> 1989. Huh. I was six. <laughs> I was nothing. <laughs> and and I and I saw that in the theater, by the way. <laughs> That does not surprise me. <laughs> I saw I saw it the same day that uh, I saw Batman, the uh, Tim Burton Batman. Ooh, nice! That's a good double feature. Well, I watched there. both of those in the theater. That's a good double feature. I can dig that <laughs> for sure. Oh. But uh, but yeah, man. Like I think I I think um, in in Ghostbusters though, that's the joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? the The joke is that it escalates, and it's like, whoa, well, okay, well, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and then, but I think that's the joke. Like, like I mean, if we're taking it all seriously, they would have died in the first movie. True. When, when mm. they when they crossed the streams and blew up the freaking gate, they would have died up there. True. It's it's more like you got know, eventually. There's only so much you can stretch that believability before someone's like, okay, that's a bit much. Um, yeah. yeah. And that granted, that limit is different for everybody. So like, I'm gonna give some like it just didn't really work for me personally. Yeah. Uh, I, but but no, Ghostbusters Two suffers because it it did not do what the first film did, which of which is what I love. It's a brilliant film device, which is mm. it grounds you in the mundane, so that when the extraordinary happens, is that much more heightened and and you're that much more interested. Ghostbusters and, Two kind of started out crazy. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> and the, even the joke of the first one was that. The minute something weird like that happens, the first thing these guys do is capitalize on it. Uh, right, right. Which was like again goes back to economics and the whole that was like the whole joke. Right. Uh, no, I, first... I agree with you. I agree with you. And yeah, and and eighty nine Ghostbusters was like from the opening frame, it's already fucking insane. Yeah. Mm. It, it's it's already like okay, this pink ooze just came out of the fucking sidewalk. It hit a baby carriage, and the baby carriage is driving it. God, I gotta rewatch Ghostbusters. Yeah, that's too. that's like that's like the, that's like the first five minutes of that movie. I haven't watched the movie in like five years. I gotta rewatch it. Apparently, uh, but, but yeah, I'm telling you, Ghostbusters two ages really well, man. All right, I'll give it another chance. It, 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 it chance. ages well. It grows on you, man. It grows on you. Um, 
and and the ILM effects in there are are wild. And, and the effects are still good. So, that that yeah. I won't deny. Yeah, the effects are still great. Um, there there's still some things that they got away with back then that I still don't understand. You know, um, because right. most of it had to be practical. So yeah, for sure. I really gotta go back on my mind. But, uh, my but back but back to yeah. the object of my affection currently. Yeah, afterlife. Um, a- afterlife. Um, it just it just rhymes so well with the other movies. It does. Mm-hmm. Um, it like I said, it ends the original story so well. Um, I'm I'm just like like I said, all all the anger in me as a fan has ceased. I'm just glad I got this. Yeah, I just never thought it was gonna happen. For sure, I never mm-hmm. ever ever thought that I would get to see an end of my favorite story. Yeah, um, uh, and I think it ends on a good note. It knows it for the most part knows what it's doing. Yeah. Um. I it it definitely works where it needs to, um, yeah. and it yeah. has enough self awareness to not get too full of itself. And um, well, and and that's that's what I mean. That's that's why 2016 um was just so below the bar, man. Yeah. It, it's um this Ghostbusters comedy is very highbrow, and and that's that's the guiding principle. I remember Harold Ramis, rest in peace. Um, when they interviewed him about it, he was said, you know. We all came from places like Second City and SNL, where um, when we play characters and bits, we had to write our own bits most of the time. Mm-hmm. And he said the thing that he always tried to do, and he wrote most of the dialogue that ended up in those two films, was that you you always in comedy, you always want to lead with the top of your intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like even the village idiot knows something. <laughs> yeah, or know something for sure. And it's declarative and it's and it's out there and it's confident. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So so yeah, just the the highbrow humor of Ghostbusters, it just you just shouldn't be trying to, to degrade it. Yeah. I, I would have I would have loved to see a set of female Ghostbusters operate on that level. Yeah. That would you know great. what I mean? Ra- mm-hmm. rather than you know, pee pee poo poo fart. Yeah, and, but again, um, it, was, it was a Paul Feig movie, and this Paul Feig just doesn't work on that caliber. Um, exactly, like, and which is why I never liked any of his movies. Uh, but, but that's that's why that's why I'm look that's what I was looking for when I saw 2016. I didn't get it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I felt like there was a couple of actresses in there who could have given us that. Yeah, like um, oh god, who was in that movie? <laughs> So, so my my picks my picks to be voted off the island are Leslie Jones and um and uh what what's her name Kate McKinnon is that right No, Kate Kate McKinnon can stay. Uh, um, um, what what was her name? I can't remember the other lead. Melissa McCarthy is okay; she could stay. But Kristen Wiig. Yeah. Yeah, Kristen Wiig and Leslie Jones get voted off the island. We need two other women there. I don't know who. But uh, but I but I felt like I I felt like Melissa McCarthy had she got had she got rid of the slapstick yeah and Kate McKinnon was allowed to do more yeah that they could have the they probably yeah. could have pulled that together into something yeah probably you know but it just wasn't the right script wasn't the right director um wasn't the right idea it it wasn't the right time yeah um and and like I said I I probably would have been more accepting of that one coming after afterlife Mm -hmm. um and and the reason being because i know i have intimate knowledge where the the 2016 ghostbusters was supposed to have a crossover event where they eventually met the original ghostbusters Mm -hmm. right would make way more sense if it happened now yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah would, would make tons more sense if it happened now I mean, they can, I guess, if they still really wanted to. Uh, <laughs> I, well, but I think they sullied it. Yeah, they, no, they, they they sullied the reputation. Like, like Ghostbusters Afterlife did half of the numbers it would have had it come out in 2016. Yeah, mm. you know, and and we'll never get that back. We'll we'll never get that goodwill back from from Sony. We'll never get that goodwill back from the fans. There's the, we'll always go into a Ghostbusters film now wondering like if it's going to be this one or that one. I'll, I'm you know? I'm willing to give a chance that this one, based on how the, the numbers it's been pulling, like has restored a little faith. I, uh, no, I I mean, of course it has. It definitely restored my faith. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm just saying I'm just saying that, um, you know, 
pe people that sit in rooms that make decisions are going to notice that that it did half as well as when 2016 came out. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, now keep now keep in mind that Ghostbusters Afterlife had a significantly less budget True. than yeah. 2016. So they're gonna make more money regardless. Makes sense. Yeah. But but Ghostbusters 2016 off of the brand name alone made almost 300 million dollars. Damn. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, off the strength of nostalgia alone. Well, you can also argue controversy. Million. But what say again? You can also argue controversy. Uh well, we'll see. I think controversy is what kept people away from it. Maybe I think it definitely drove some people to it, though, because like well, that's well the the, the, the press the press was like if if you don't the press for the movie was like if you don't watch this, you're a sexist. Yeah, you know what I mean. So so I mean naturally, I'd say a good twenty five percent of your audience is is not involved in politics whatsoever and and are trying to entertain themselves. Mm -hmm. and they're walking away. Yeah, I can see that. You, you know, like like that's that's what I'm saying. Um and and I'm glad they learned their lesson with that. Mm -hmm. Like we we need we need the return of the 80s female heroine. We need that. <laughs> I think you it's I mean I do, I'm kind of in the ballpark of like I don't think we need just the 80s female heroine because I also think the 80s female heroine was also mostly written by men uh and mostly like James Cameron had a type Let's put it that way. Uh, um, which like, I'm not saying there's, there's not room for it at all, but I think it's also like, uh, I also don't see that as like the definitive strong female lead either, which is personally for me. I, 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 I see it as, as the most liberating and, and the, the best representation so far. Maybe. I'm not, I'm, I'm not too, I'm not too keen on, on women being written in film that make older women look bad to prop themselves up. And that happens a lot. And, no, I'm not saying and, that's good either, but yeah. And and by and by the way, I think we need the return of the '80s heroine when we keep mining '80s films. In that context, sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, fair. I'll, I'll like, give you that. Like that's, that's totally fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna if you're gonna take a name and make a movie off of it based on nostalgia from the era, yeah, that's might as well. That's that is fair. I'll give you that is completely. Yeah. I'll, I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> But um, but but yeah, that's that's not even my only sticking point. I um, it's just a, it's just a superior made movie. It's just better. It is, yeah, it's for sure. Better. It's it's fun. I enjoyed it. The acting's really good. The story's good. Writing's good. Um, yeah, it does exactly what it needs to. So for that, it gets all the props in the world. So good yep. job, they redeemed it, Ghostbusters. I mean, it, it gets all the props from me. Yep, and it's. So so yeah. After this, I'm good to you know buy Ghostbusters merchandise for another 15 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm good until y'all give me something else. Now it's like okay, we or or until I add to the plot. Mm. Oh, that's right. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Uh, <laughs> I feel like that tease is a good place to end this. <laughs> but but yeah. Um. But but yeah. Not ashamed. Um, I I cried. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I miss Harold Ramis. I miss his writing. I miss his directing. Yeah. Um, I miss the four of them together. I'm glad we have additional characters now. I yeah. like them all. Um, for different reasons. Yeah. I'm and I'm glad the story just got finished getting told. Um, did you watch the extended? Did you watch the, all the cutscenes at the end? You mean the post credit stuff? Yeah, I did. Yeah. You you saw them both? Yeah, I saw them both. So then you know why I'm so excited because like I said it it opens up the universe in a great way. It does. Yeah. To to where to where we can expect different stories to come from different directions and not just be what we already had. For sure. Yeah. And and I think now that the third one is done, it's time for that. I think there's a like yeah, I feel like there's a goodwill going about it now. Yeah. That there's there's room for like and different and kind of stories and like, and that's what i mean had, had, paul, had paul feig come to us with this after afterlife i'd have been like it would have made more sense yeah yeah like <laughs> let, let's try it. let's see what happens yeah. yeah you know um but but and and now i think moving forward i'll be firmly in that category i'll be less rigid um i i feel like i i feel like my franchise was respected mm -hmm. so yeah. 
now I can I can open my mind. I can be way more forthcoming towards new material, and yeah. I can allow it into my heart. Absolutely, yeah. You know, so I feel this this is just the way you do it. This is this just was, the way you do nostalgia. This's this was Ghostbusters fulfilling its redemption arc after exactly. like twenty years. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I I mean I I will always wonder what that third script would have looked like on film. Yeah. But uh, but I've kind of already seen that too because we had the video game. It was it was basically it was almost one to one. Was it really? Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. The the third movie was supposed to be that. Um. So so in the first movie, we understand that we have these portals between our reality and a different reality, right? Yeah. The second one, we figure out that there there are ways for uh that reality to intrude without having the portal open. Mm-hmm. And then Ghostbusters, the third one was called Hellbent. It was called Ghostbusters Hellbent. And it literally, um, it goes back to a line that when they're interviewing Dana Barrett in the firehouse, mm-hmm. it, where where she's talking about, you know, the dogs in her fridge and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and they're, they're talking to each other. They're like, you know what it could be? It could be, you know, past life intruding on present time. Mm, okay. Hellbent was all about the, that dimension that they've been trying to push back, literally taking the place of New York and then merging. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so, so like, so the Mirror Universe, the Gozer Universe, I guess you can call it, was merging with New York. And, and so all of the structures in New York were starting to look like the Mirror Universe and they were like crossing over, but, but they were both there at the same time. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, if you play the video game, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I always kind of figured, like, I mean, you say it's one to one. I always kind of assumed that the game was padded out because you know it's a video game. Uh, well, well, yeah, well, I mean, the video game is obviously 19 to 20 hours. Yeah, so like, so it definitely padded out. But I, but I mean, like the the premise was pretty much one. Mm, okay, I see what you mean. You no, know, it yeah. it was pretty much Ghostbusters Hellbent, the video game. You know. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's a good game. I love the game. Yeah, I, I love the game too. Um, yeah. I and unfortunately, it's the last time you know Harold Ramis gets to play Egon. So unfortunately, yeah. I, I refer back to it a lot. Yeah, as well you should if you can track him down. Um, oh. So so yeah, so I'm I'm happy camper man. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited for the future of the franchise. Um, I I didn't feel like they took a wrong turn. I felt like like I said, like there was some times where Paul Rudd was teetering on trying to make it his movie, mm-hmm. yeah. and I was like, nah. <laughs> don't eat it yeah that, that ain't it i don't change. know i didn't really get that vibe personally but i see what you're saying um you know just just a few things a few things yeah i feel like most of it's uh like nothing nothing's a deal breaker uh as far as nothing like, is a deal breaker you're right yeah so like even like even though our complaints about it like with like nothing ruined the overall drama of the film <laughs> i i agree and and if uh if you're if you're polarized by this film then you really liked 2016 oh uh, for better or worse, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever that means for you, I'm not. I'm not going to comment on that anymore. Uh, I've already shared my thoughts on that. It's <laughs> done. We're moving on. <laughs> yep, we're we're moving on. I and and it's in a good place, and I couldn't be happier. And it's kind of funny because we're probably going to get another equivalent of that tomorrow um, with Spider Man. So we're gonna see uh, how that goes. <laughs> oh, and and I just heard through the grapevine that another Ghostbusters video game is happening. Nice. So uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm so me fingers crossed. I hope it's an RPG. That'd be cool. If if it's if it's an RPG or an MMO, like I will be playing nothing else on Twitch for the next five years. <laughs> 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 like, if if that like I'm telling you right now, if that shit is an MMO. Like I'm, I'm throwing my consoles out. Do like, they still like, make MMOs? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, man. Because I have like, like I know like Skyrim is like the only popular one I know of right now. Uh, well, like Final Fantasy too. Uh, well, yeah, Final Fantasy, Star Wars, The Old Republic is still kicking. Oh, is that still ten, kicking? Yeah, ten years strong. Um, Ooh, them. Uh, Amazon Studios just put out the New World. That right. Uh, I forgot what that got. Time. That got a fair amount of press, but uh, their economy kind of destroyed itself so that that's that's what i heard yeah um dc universe online is still kicking is it really huh yeah oh, all right. and, and it's rather good <laughs> evidently i've missed out on the mmo world uh well 
like, like I said, fingers crossed, it's an RPG or it's an MMO. Because hey, I guess we'll find out. But... Creating my own character, managing my own ghost busting business, hot. <laughs> hot. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> I can see it now. <laughs> yep, I'm. I will be up in it all day long, all the time. <laughs> just go onto your stream. You just like spreadsheets everywhere. <laughs> yep, spreadsheets everywhere. I, I, I'm the type. Again, I was born in the '80s. I still write down notes by hand, bro. I, I don't do that yeah. just because my chick, my handwriting is chicken scratch. <laughs> I do that. Well, I, I have excellent. <laughs> I am jealous of that because I never have. Well, uh, well, to get that penmanship, I I had to have a major, massive injury that almost killed me. So <laughs> okay, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, in order to get that penmanship, uh, yeah, I got hurt. Right, you told me that story. I remember that. Yeah, I, yeah. I got hurt when I was fifteen and had to have major surgery on my hand, and I had to learn how to occupational therapy. I had to learn how to write again. Because you, t- you so, were telling her your near-death experience. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I remember that, sir, because that still freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> it, was, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. And, and you're like 15, and it happened instantly. But uh, like, oh. that's a topic for another day. Uh, uh. On that note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we, we we drifted off, so I hope you I hope you edit this one a little bit. That's <laughs> eh, fine. <laughs> but, uh, but, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm just glad Ghostbusters is back. The, it was never about... It was never about people or the place. It was about the feel. Yeah. And and they we we sent off our heroes. We have new characters. Our new characters give us that feel, and we're moving on, man. Yeah. And I'm and I'm happy. Yeah, it's it's a good place to restart the franchise, and I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Yep. Yep. Me too. So I think it's all we got. Oh, go ahead. I pretty much said the same thing for like twenty minutes. I know, so that's why I'm wrapping it up now. Uh, so this week is all about Sp- the Spider-Mans, and uh, next week everything comes out. So we're just gonna see whatever we can. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you and me, we're we are massively behind. We got we got Matrix. We still haven't done uh, Saints of Newark. <laughs> I think that one's kind of done at this really? point. Really? Like I, I know because I, I was that. thinking I was sitting down doing maintenance on my computer today, and I was like, you know, what? I should probably just throw this movie on. Uh, maybe I don't know. I don't. It's one of those things like we could do it. I just don't know if there's enough demand to like us do review on to justify it. Uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll see what the fan fiction people say. No, oh, man. It's more like I got like I was watching West Side Story and like every trailer said coming out Christmas. I'm like fuck. Uh, <laughs> like that's I was look terms like that's five movies, Matt five movies that come out next fucking week that I have to try to make time oh, yeah, for. Yeah, shit. I, I gotta go I gotta go catch Spider-Man. When are you guys doing that review? I have no idea yet. Uh, no, no yet? No. Well, I'll make sure... Yeah, I'll make sure I, I try to get into the theater. I, I gotta drive to San Jose, but... Uh, yeah, like, I'll, I'll, I'll put something on the Facebook or Discord or something like that. So, uh, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay. And other than that, so, that'll be exciting. But, Looking forward to but it. yeah, go... But if you're watching this and you're on the fence about Ghostbusters, go see it. Yeah, it's a good Go time. see it. Um, I'm pretty sure it'll be streaming soon. Or yeah, you'll be still able to rent now. it. So go go see it. If, if, you are, uh, if you've been any type of Ghostbusters fan for a, a small period of time or a long period of time, you will enjoy it. Yeah. And it's still in theaters. I think it still has a pretty good amount of uh, screenings available, even with Spider-Man coming out. So... Yep. Still a lot of options to go check it out, and you better see now before Matrix and everything else just consumes the theater. Well, uh, yeah, Matrix, yeah. It, it, did you play that Unreal Five demo? No, I haven't. Uh, is go it good? Go do it. Is that, what? What is it on? It it's on Xbox and PlayStation. Okay. The, the Unreal Five demo. It's called The Matrix Awakens. Uh, I'll download it on my PS5. It is amazing. When when they said next gen, that's what they mean. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's yeah. The last Matrix game I played was a weird one where like you had to fight like a giant Mr. Smith at the end. Uh oh yeah, yeah. Path of Neo. Path of Neo. Yep. I still enjoy that, was that fun game. One. That was a fun I, one. I enjoyed it for what it was. Uh anyway, I think it's all we got, guys. Thank you all for watching. See you later. All right, peace.